Hey everyone, Roger here from NASCAR Experts YouTube channel. It's time to do some rear sport brakes on a G30 5 Series. It's going to apply to most BMWs with this style brakes. Let's show you how it's done, full torque specs, let's go. If you're new to the channel, please remember to subscribe and please hit that like because it helps me a lot. Thanks everyone. Always use a jack stand for safety. Here's a little secret, sport brakes on a rear BMW is pretty much like conventional brakes. But let me show you how it's done. 17 millimeter lug. Right, where's your parking brake? The parking brake on this is the EMF or electromechanical parking brake. You can't just go ahead and zip these off and expect to compress the piston. There's two ways to do it. Hopefully the way that we're gonna do it's gonna work. We're gonna to try to electrically command these on so that the parking brake pulls, the, pulls that uh, motor back so that we can then compress the piston normally. Otherwise you have to use a special tool, which I'll put a link in the corner here where you actually have to twist the piston, which uh, winds up the gear inside and, and it compresses it at the same time so that you can do it that way. Okay, pro tip, do not take the brake caliper off on either side when you do this because when you command that to retract, it actually first expands, then it contracts. So if you have this off, you blow out your piston and that's a bad day. Always remember when you're doing brakes to check your brake fluid level. So this is actually a little bit too high. I'm gonna have to suck some of this out because when we compress the piston on the caliper, that fluid has to go somewhere. If it overflows, it gets into this reservoir and it could damage the paint. All right, just like any repair, we've tried actually three different devices, including an Autel, and the Autel is also having, and it's just the dongle one, it won't decode the VIN. We went from hopefully easy and we could just follow the procedure and deactivate the electronic parking brake, but looks like we're gonna have to use old reliable here and do it manually. All right, everyone, so we have our brake pad and caliper service kit right here by Maddox, and we have to mechanically turn the EMF because the three tools that we tried to use to activate the EMF did not work today. So you need a 17 and a 13. So I have a 17, this set right here, and this is from Capri and actually works great. And a deep 13. And you need the 17 to hold the caliper slider from spinning so you can loosen the 13 in the back. repeat for the bottom. Leave the bolt on top so that the caliper doesn't twist out on you when you're trying to loosen the bottom. All right, that releases the caliper. And we have the sensor in the back. I'm going to pop that off. Slide the pads off. So on some of these cars, you can actually sneak the rotor off without taking the caliper bracket off. And we're gonna give this a shot and see if this is applicable to the G30 as well. And there's a trick for this. So then that's one less thing you actually have to touch. This is a six millimeter, and we just have one of the wheel lugs gently screwed in. Okay, give it a whack. And let's see if the magic happens here. Just have to get the right angle. Rotate the hub to the right spot and it worked. Look at that. Wow, that's cool. Now you don't even have to touch the bracket in the back. Look at that. That is awesome. Check that out. And going in is just the same way. So we're going to clean this up now. So the right location to sneak that out is the holder screw to right at the emblem straight across. You could say three o'clock. 
When you get your kit from BMW, it actually only comes with two of these replacement sliders. That's because there's actually a part shortage, so they only provide you with one for each side and not two, not a total of four, two for each side. So you choose which one is the worst one, and that's the one you replace. Always remember to clean up the hub. These pad slider clips, they just pull up. You want to clean this, clean this area up gently. It is a painted surface over here, but this is not painted. And same thing on the top, you could take the clip off and just clean it up and you're going to have to reuse one. Or if the other side looks good, you can go ahead and put two new ones on one side, but the recommendation from BMW right now is to actually just replace one of them, and it's due to a part shortage. Alright, we're using number six from the kit. And this is a three hole, but the number six has a two, but it seems to fit pretty good. So to set this up, that goes there, that slides over the back side. Bring that all the way down, right? You have to line up that with the notch. You can see it's almost like in the shape of a brake pad. You unscrew it till there's contact and then you slowly screw it in. And the rotating actually locks the gear on the inside if you don't if you're not able to electronically activate it this would be the way you would go and actually this one's going pretty easy so if it gets tight you're about at the point where you're supposed to push it in by hand but since it's still turning we can actually still use the tool to help compress the piston if it does stop, then you might be at the point where you're just going to compress the piston the conventional way with a pair of channel locks. And we're at the end. And there you go. That's as easy as it's done. It would have been easier if it was electronic but unfortunately none of the tools that we had work. I know that a more expensive version of Autel that runs around three to $600 would have done it for us, but the dongles for some reason did not. We'll make sure to report that to the manufacturer to see if they can get that resolved. All right, here we go. So we got our new correct rear rotor and look at that, snuck it right in, line it up, put your new hole down in and this is 16 newton meters we since we have a torque wrench yeah give it a little tap and we're good to go that's 16 it's not much all right we're gonna go ahead and install our one new brake slider fantastic thank you bmw keep in mind the brake pads is an inner and an outer how do you tell the difference this closed end is the inner this open end here is the outer now if you flip it over it looks like there's a spot to clip something there but they are distinctly different. So just remember the one with the open U, that one goes on the outside and the one that's closed goes on the inside. And see this coating, we're not gonna put brake paste on this because it is sport brakes, but we are gonna apply brake paste to the two sides here because that is a contact surface. And basically this area here where, where the brake paste is applied is where it rides and it does float in this slider right here. That's one. And the back side you just slide on the same way as we did the front. And you're ready to go ahead and put your caliper on that we've already compressed. Now you might have to push these ends here in a little bit. They do float to get it to slide on properly. And then the hardware is one-time use hardware and there is Loctite on these. 
So we're gonna go ahead and give you a torque spec and we're gonna torque those down. And you run them in the same way that we took them off using that nice thin wrench. And the torque spec on these is 35 Newton meters. Yeah, we're gonna need the wrench to hold. We switched to a medium 13 so you can get in there with the torque wrench. All right, and the wheel torque is 140 Newton meters. Remember to depress the brake pedal when you're done to compress both sides. We're gonna go ahead and finish up the other side. All right, brake pad sensor goes this way, up and around, back towards me here, and then up under this cover. So we gotta take this uh, plastic nut out here. this panel back and there's that cover. Same thing applies a lot of times. This one actually looks pretty good for lifting. So it might actually slide out but you get right under here with a tool. And this one came out no problem without breaking. Lock it in and then just reverse. You know, if you leave the other one in, you can actually just kind of overlay it and figure out exactly how it goes as well. It's not too hard. That gets locked into the plastic tab there, down onto that holder, and then back around. To the holder there. And then around to the holder there. And then uh, just put that back on. Don't forget to put your 10. You can close that up and then we'll clip on the brake pad sensor. And this one did not get locked into the brake bleeder it just sits just like that and that clears the, the wheel. Routing is really important. One of the common things that I see sometimes is that when somebody does a brake job, the car comes into the dealership with a brake pad light and it's because they didn't route this right and it rubs on the tire. So make sure your routing is correct. Or sometimes from a brake flush where it's left loose and then it rubs on the, on the wheel. Step on the brake, activate the parking brake, which I already have active, and then we can go and torque the wheels. And again, these are 140 Newton meters. All right, everyone, how to reset the rear brakes when it hasn't tripped the light yet. So if you look over here, these are the messages that we get. We get engine oil, brake fluid, vehicle check. They all say okay. Well, there's no selection for brakes. And if I do the same thing and press the hold the BC button so that the messages come up for a brake reset, it's not going to come up. So there's really no way to reset it unless the brake pad actually has tripped and it's worn through the sensor. So what you actually have to do is use a scan tool to reset the date or the time and the scan tool will actually be able to reset it completely for you or you have to wait for the light to come on and then you can go ahead and do the BC button because it is by, it's just by time at that point. So if the warning does come on and your brakes are already been replaced, you just do the same procedure like I showed in the video for doing the front brakes. You pat it on, I'll show you just so that you know. You go one, two, three, that turns on everything. You press and hold the BC button. You make sure that your parking brake is not activated because that will prevent you from actually doing it. You keep pressing and holding and it will come up for, right? We have engine oil, reset impossible. We have brake fluid reset possible. We did not do brake fluid. We have vehicle check reset possible. And then back to engine oil. So there's no way to reset the rear brakes unless it's worn through the sensor. Now you can cause the sensor to trip just by ripping it out and taking the car for a drive. So that might be something that you wanna do. If you're gonna do the rear brakes ahead of time and you know they're getting low, rip your sensor out Turn the key on, take it for a drive. It should tell you that your brakes are due because that is gonna be an open circuit now. 
And then at that point, you can go ahead and do the reset procedure. But otherwise, you would have to use a scan tool or wait for the warning to come on and then you can do the reset. After doing your brakes, you wanna take them for a gentle road test just to bed in everything lightly and then drive moderately for about 200 kilometers. Hey everyone, thanks for watching. You saw some cool tips, especially how to get that rotor off without taking the whole caliper bracket in the rear. Hopefully you appreciated that. Please remember to like and subscribe and let me know in the comments what you thought of this video. Take care, everyone.